All right, so remember whenever you come in, uh, what you want to do is get your station ready to go. If you've got your own system, that's fine. However, I still recommend you work on our system. Ours have been set up for you ready to work, and you might be wasting your time trying to get your system to work while we've got a system ready to go and you're falling behind. So concentrate on our system first, and then on the meantime, work on your system. But um, in the in the Z drive, so far what's what's in there in Campus Mobile 2 is a copy of the template that that I provided last time that we created together. If you want a copy of mine, you can use it. If you want to use your own template from last time, that's fine. I recommend you use your own template because it's your own work. But if it didn't quite work, I'll always put a copy of my work in the network folder and the mobile 2 folder. This is a basic template. I put the notes of what we did last time also, and in there is what I said that what you need to do every time you come in, you need to uh, do these these steps, uh, the part about in the command prompt steps to start off every day. You want the command prompt. Remember, there's node.js and there's node.js command prompt. You want the command prompt. Then the node.js one does other things that we don't need. In the Mac, it's simply you go to terminal. It doesn't appear to install an extra node command prompt. You just go to your terminal. Now, I may switch between the terminology of saying the node.js command prompt, or saying the command prompt, or saying terminal. It's all the same. We need to be in the command prompt, in the node.js command prompt. And then every time you come in, you're going to do code over create whatever. You can call it whatever you want. Test one, whatever, XYZ, whatever. We need to create a quick project, CD into the folder, Cordova platform add Android and the browser operating systems, and then Cordova build. That's the part that takes a little while. That's the part that takes all those Pac-Man dots marching across your screen. So once that's done, we're ready to work for today. If you haven't done that, you'll need to do that, and you're going to uh, have to wait for that. But at this point, what I'd like is we're either going to you are either going to use or have a copy of the template file from last time. On my flash drive, I have the template from Thursday, and I have that camera test file that we were playing with to take a quick photo. And in the network folder, I have the notes and the template from Thursday. What I would recommend is that you copy, even if it's your own template, make a copy of your own template um, because we're gonna make changes. I prefer to have a version from the last time, pristine, and then a version for today where I can make changes. In case I make mistakes, I've got the version I can come back to. The version in the network folder will always be there, and it's locked, actually, so you'll always be able to get a copy of yours, uh, of mine, for you to work with. And so I'm making a copy of my template on my flash drive, and I'm going to put today's date, and I'm going to work on this copy. As it's copying, the first thing I want to do is go back to the Cordova documentation. Go back to the Cordova apache.org website. This is of course the number one place to get all the documentation. We're going to look at one of these documentations, one of these documents, uh, so we can actually uh, improve upon our template a bit. Our template, if that's going to be our starting point for future apps, we want to set up a few more things on it to use it for future apps. Mm -hmm. So as I'm copying my template, Go to cordova.apache.org and we'll go to the documentation. On the left side in the chapters, find the chapter about reference config XML. Config XML is a global config file that controls many aspects of your Cordova app's behavior. This platform agnostic XML file is arranged based on the W3C's package web apps widget specification and extends to specify core 
Cordova API features, plugins, and platform specific settings. So it just goes on to tell you that uh, you have your basic config XML file. It's in the root of your app, whatever your app is called. If you're using an older version of Cordova, version 3, there's a note right there, but for us, we're using the latest one, version 6. Uh, this explains each of the tags, like the widget tag and so forth. But what we need to do, the root element, we need to specify uh, some basic information about our app uh, because we're going to be targeting uh, Android devices um, for the moment and later on we'll be targeting iOS devices. We have a spot here which sets our Android version code and our iOS CF bundle version. These are uh, extra attributes to add to the widget tag that show uh, we are targeting, our app is targeting these versions of iOS and these versions of Android. So hopefully you've got your copy. I made a copy and as I was talking it, it made the copy and I'm going to put today's date on it. So I'm copying, I've made a copy, I've got today's date on it. Inside of the folder we have a config XML file. Let's open that in uh, Notepad++. Does this effectively run off of the flash drive? It is a little slower from the flash drive. It, usually I do it from the flash drive. It works fine. It is a little slower than running it off the hard drive. However, of course, the big uh, downside of the hard drive is in case the power goes out and I never had any of that saved, it's gone. So I think the speed decrease is enough of a is not enough of a detriment. I'd rather have it that it that the power goes out and I have it saved on my flash drive than it running a bit slow. I'm going to open up the notepad here. And so what the documentation is saying, we need to add a couple of attributes to our app uh, so that it specifies our iOS and Android targets. Um, they're listed right here. We have ID, version, Android version code. Notice widget ID, version, and it doesn't say anywhere about Android version code. So logically, in the widget tag, we're going to add Android dash version code, and notice the capital C. I'm going to copy that. Not the part that says string, that just tells you that what should be typed into this attribute is a string. So this is the alternate uh, alternative. Uh, the alternate version for Android sets the version code for the app. See the Android guide for information on how this attribute may be modified. I'm going to copy that Android dash version code and I will add it as an attribute after version. So this is on line 2. We've got ID attribute, version attribute, XLMNS attribute, before ver or after version, Android dash version code equals quote end quote. That's the syntax, as we've seen before in HTML. Some attribute is equal to some value, in quotes. This widget tag defines our whole app. And we're saying, well, the general version of our project is 1.0.0. But the Android version code is going to be defined right here. The, uh, the version of Android is dependent upon the kind of weird way that Android is versioned. There's a version 1 of Android, a version 2, 4, 5, it's on version 7 at the moment. But behind the scenes, there's an API version that goes sequentially. When we had ver uh, Android 4, 
and then eventually a 4.1 that was actually like Android 10 and Android 11. So every new version of Android behind the scenes is incremented by a whole number. Right now we're on Android 7 point whatever, but internally it's like 25, API 25, something like that. We can look it up somewhere in the, you know, we can actually look it up right here. If you have your node running, you can type Android. It'll tell it, it'll tell it to us right here. Right here. Android 7.11 is actually API 25. It's the 25th version of Android. Uh, if I have a device that is Android 4, that's API 14. The earliest that we can work with is Android 2.2, but internally it's API 7. The third way to refer to the Android versions is by an alphabetic dessert name. So. Uh, Android 7 right now is Nougat, N. Uh, M before it was Marshmallow. L before that was uh, Lollipop. Before that was uh, K, Kit Kat, etc., etc. So there, it was alphabetical. There was, uh, there was uh, Eclair, Donut, uh, G, Gingerbread, Honeycomb, etc. All of these code names alphabetically for desserts. So some people refer to it, I'm running Android 7.1. Some people are saying it's API 25. And some people say, I'm running Nougat. But whatever one of those you want to memorize, the only one that matters for us right now is the API. So our version here, Android version code equals something. We're saying we want our version of this app to be compatible with X version of Android and up. I may say then, okay, Android version code equals 7. I want my app to be compatible with versions 7 and up, which is all the way back to Android 2, which if, you, if anyone still is running an Android 2, hopefully we can take up a collection plate for them because that's really, really old. They need a new phone. Uh, we're going to start to target Android 4. Because Android 3 was sort of like an offshoot that was only going to be for tablets. That never quite worked out. The families came back together. But really, Android 4 and up is really what we should target most of the time. And I'm sorry for the people that have an Android 2. I'm sorry, because you have an old phone. And our app won't work. Just like 90% of every other app in the App Store. So our API is 14. That's what we need to type here. All of that is to say here, 14. You know what, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is slightly different. This, what I just said, does, uh, does make sense, but we added in a different spot. Sorry about that. I'm thinking ahead. Uh, this is going to be Android version code 1. What this is saying is this is the first version of the code that we're uploading to the App Store. Uh, again, we don't really want to add comments to this file. This file is not expecting comments, so we should not add comments. You should write comments elsewhere. This is the version of our code. Um, for uh, what we're uploading to the App Store. Um, this seems the same as this, version 1, Android version code 1. The importance of this is that we um, are going to upload our code eventually to the App Store, to Google Play, for example. And the uh, the the App Store wants to know what overall version of, of our code is this. It's version 1. If we're working on it and we wanted to upload eventually version 1.1, we would have to increment this by 1 to be 2. This is going to be a whole number always. 
let's say in a few months we then release release a version 1.2 to the App Store. That's got to be then a version 3. Every time we upload a new version of this code to the App Store, we have to increase this number by a whole number, by 1. Eventually, I'm going to release version 2.0 of my app. What should the version code be? 4. So every new version that I upload to the App Store, it increments this. This can actually be anything. This can be any version number, but this one has to be an ever-increasing number if we want to upload it properly to the App Store. App Store will go to Apple Store or App Store? In this case, because it says Android version code, it's for the Android App Store. Yes, we have a different attribute for the for the uh, iTunes App Store. Okay. So the, the, the version of this one that we just saw before the App Store that It's, it's, a, it's different, yes. I probably would be uploading the, a new Android version to the Android App Store and a new iPhone version to the iOS Store, so I'd probably be increasing them both. But I don't need to. I can upload Android version code 2, but leave Android uh, iOS version code 1 yeah, yeah. there. This uh, version code, like I'm saying here, this, one's, uh, this one is arbitrary. But what I'll do here is I'll leave this as 1, dot one dot twenty seventeen zero three zero seven I'm putting today's date this we can make up completely this is version one of our project uh, subversion one with today's date that's internal that can be anything but Android version code has to be whole numbers This is the iOS version right here, iOS CF bundle version, alternative version for iOS. Further, for further details, see that documentation. So if we take a quick look, let's see that documentation. That goes to developer.apple.com, specifies the version, the build version, which identifies an iteration. The build version number should be a string comprised of three non-negative period separated integers whole numbers with the first integer being greater than zero. For example, 3.1.2. The string should only contain numeric, so 0 through 9 in the period. Leading zeros are truncated. So 1.02 is equivalent to 1.2. Major version, second thirds, etc. While developing a new version of your app, you can include a suffix after the number for example, 3.1.3a1, the character in the suffix, etc. So you, the point of this is, uh, in here we're using uh, the, the three, three digits. So from the documentation here, I'm going to copy iOS CF bundle version. I'm copying it so that, it, uh, so that I don't misspell it. It has to be spelled this way capital C, capital F, capital B, capital V into my notepad after Android version code equals quotes 1.1 I believe we can do the date if I'm reading this right Contain numbers, first integer, positive numbers, leading zeros. Yeah, that should work. We'll do the same thing. 2017 0307, because after all, that is just the number uh, 20,170,307. And then tomorrow it'll be 20,170,308. Yes. Oh, okay. I should read the whole thing. Oh, there it is. 0 to 255. Okay. 
So then we'll just do one. This is sort of a moot point anyway, because we're not even able to create the iOS version in this room, because we're on Windows. But if you're running this on a Mac, we would want this if we're also making a version for the Mac. We've got then the going further down here. If you scroll down to the preference, or on the left side, if you select preference, sets various options as a name and value pair. Many preferences are unique to specific platforms and will be indicated. So these are things we're adding to um, specify or target things for a specific platform. One of the things I want to do here, this is what I was getting at earlier about our API 14. This is where it's listed. Android Max SDK version and Android Min SDK version. Sets the maximum SDK version attribute and sets the minimum. So what we're saying here, in the in the um, platform section of Android, this preference that we're about to add only applies to um, only applies to to Android. So the way this works is on line 21 we will create a new preference preference the syntax is name equals value equals preference name attribute value attribute space slash this is XML this syntax for this language has to be this way we were used to when we had a single tag not to finish it off with anything that was valid HTML5 this is XML so it has to be this way a space and a slash notice it highlights and notice how everything else is the same way some sort of tag some sort of attribute if it's a single closing attribute self-closing it closes itself like that if there's a pair Platform slash platform attribute. So what it's saying here, we have a preference, and then we're um, setting the uh, these values: uh, max uh, SDK version and min. So we'll do here the name is Android. We can copy it. Android min SDK version. Fourteen. This is what we were looking at in the SDK manager. Android 4.0 and up is API 14. We're saying the minimum version of our project is 14. So that's what that preference is saying right there. We have max. I'm actually not going to set the max because then that perhaps might constrain us too easily. A newer version of the OS should be able to handle older versions. 
but perhaps not vice versa. So I only want to set the minimum. But I do then also want to set the target version of the SDK so that we can compile our project. So I'm going to copy this one. Android target SDK version. And notice SDK is only a capital S. That's why it might be better to copy it. After that preference, we need a new preference. And same thing. Obviously, you can save some effort. You can copy that whole line and paste it. But make sure that this is Android target SDK version 14. We can set a um, a couple of other universal properties as well. Uh, for example, the um, a generic background color behind of our behind our app. When we go from screen to screen in our app, there may be like a plain white background as we switch from screen to screen, which may cause it to look a little odd. So if we set a default background color to display in the apps, we have control of that. So we have a, a background color somewhere over here, background color, I just saw it right there, background color. Notice this one applies um, to Android, Blackberry, and Windows sets the app's background color, supports a four byte hex value with the first three representing the uh, with the first byte representing the alpha channel and the standard RGB values after that. For Windows the channel is ignored. Okay, so we'll need another preference. This one is for background color. This one applies to most of the platforms, so we will add it outside of any platform specific. This is the platform specific of Android. Let's give ourselves a new preference above that. Preference name equals something, value equals something. We're going to have a, another one in just a moment, so I'm going to paste that in. Yes, forward slash. Yes. When you look at the first line on the code, uh, it's possible. How do you know that when the command and drive dash name SDK version like that? When you look at the code, it looks like name SDK, and you know, just how do you imagine that? Okay, come up with that. Because we know. You mean how do we know to add this? That's right. Well, this comes from, from further reading the, the documentation as, you know, uh, I, I, sort of, I sort of cut the corners a little bit. I know what we need to do, because I've taught this class a while. If you were doing this yourself, yeah, you'd have to read the documentation and see what you would need to do. But I'm already guiding us to, the, to what I would recommend for us to do. So we need a background color. What's that? Say that once. These things, these things affect the app. Yes, yes. All of these things, everything in the config file is is affecting, is targeting our app. And if we do it inside of a platform, it only applies to Android, or it only applies to iOS. But these will apply to 
to all the platforms. So I need here a preference of background color. The documentation says that this is in hexadecimal. If I was writing this in a plain old HTML file, hexadecimal starts with the pound sign, but not here, actually. It starts with a 0x. So we're saying here, this is a 0x, not an ox. If I meant an o, I would have said o. This is a 0x. This is hexadecimal. And we have RGB. But actually, the documentation says we have alpha RGB. We have transparency and then RGB. If we want this fully visible, it's FF for the maximum value, 255, and then some form of, of color. So if we had to make it very obvious, FF0000, it's going to be a bright red background. I don't want a bright red scary background. I'm just telling you here, the first two digits after the OX, the 0X, are alpha, transparency, and then after that is RGB. So uh, here's a fun color, A, B, C, D, E, F. That's going to be a gray. And we have also another item over here. Orientation. Uh, allowed values allows you to lock orientation and prevent interface from rotating in response to change in orientation. The default value means Cordova will strip the orientation preference entry from the platform's manifest, allowing the platform to fall back. Okay, so what this is saying is we saw, perhaps, some of you, if you were able to run your Cordova project on a real device, and it had the device ready, or ready to rock, whatever we call it, if you then rotate it, it would rotate, and the icon would change to one side, and the text would change to the other side. It went into landscape orientation, the app. Eventually, we're working on an app that I want to stay, have it always stay vertical. For example, if you use Facebook and Instagram and such, it's pretty much vertical. Many apps stay locked vertical. If you're going to make your own app and such, and you do want it to have landscape or portrait orientation, we would leave this value as default. But I want to lock it to only be vertical. So we need a preference with an orientation name and a value of <coughs> portrait that will lock our app to a portrait orientation. So here we have a preference equals orientation, capital O, portrait, lowercase. So at the side orientation and, uh, and the skin, does it mean that the orientation can the skin value from the portrait? Well, what, it, what it's saying is that um, the value of orientation is a string, which is right here, portrait. If I put numbers, that's a number. It's not a string, so it would be invalid. So any of these that say this has got to be a string, a string, a lot of them are strings. Very few of them are... So that's a regex, a regular expression. That's a Boolean. So if we use media playback, preference name, media playback requires user action, value, true, because it's a boolean. Default is false. So most of these are strings. This one is number in milliseconds. You are load URL timeout value. Milliseconds. Default 20,000 or 20 seconds. So the point of this is we made a few changes to our config file. This changes deep level elements of our project. We've set a, a version number, which is uh, universal, then an Android version, and then an iOS version. Then we added a couple of preferences that were universal, background, color, orientation. Then we added two preferences to focus on our Android build when we deploy. I'm going to save my config file. 
And to get the best results, if you've got one of our tablets, you should plug that in. If you've got your own device, I'll remind you in a moment, you need to activate it for developer's mode. If you remember from last time, you can use it. But if you don't have a real device to work with, um, I'll show you in just a moment. Oh, good there. Thank you. I'm missing that. I'm so used to not using them in HTML5 that we have to use them here. Good eye there. So all of these should have an ending forward slash, line 24, don't forget the forward slash. It would have given me a nice error in a moment, and then I hopefully would have seen my mistake. <laughs> so I've plugged in my real device. These tablets that you checked out should work just fine, although maybe the first time it'll pop up and ask you, would you like to allow our tablet to be used for debugging? You want to activate the yes. You want to activate don't remind me and click yes if it popped up on your tablet. If it's your own personal tablet, you have to go to the developer screen. Remember how we did that and I'll remind us how to do that in just a moment. So for the moment, if you've got one of our tablets, if you've got your own tablet and such, I'll mention that in a moment. I want in the command prompt, I need to go to this template file. I've launched my command prompt. I'm somewhere else completely different than where my template is at. My template is on my F drive. So I type the letter of my drive, colon, enter. That takes me to my F drive. You're probably on the F drive if it gives you an error. You know, if you try to go to it and it says there's no drive called that, you can try D or E or something, but it's probably F. I made, it, I made it easy on myself because last time I made a folder on my flash drive called apps. So I need to CD into apps to see the contents of your flash drive. What's the code again? Or what's the command prompt? DIR. Directory. So if you don't remember what's on your flash drive, just type DIR to see your directory, your, your flash drive. I put my apps in a folder called apps. Hopefully you did too. If you didn't, you'll have to type a huge name like this. And if you don't type it right, it won't work. But remember the shortcut, that is you start to type CD mobile and then you press tab, it'll start to fill it in for you. And if you keep pressing tab, it'll go to the next version of the file name. So that's why if you want to keep it simple, CD apps. Inside of apps, I've got tw uh, template 2017-0307. That's what I'm working on right now. CD template 2017-0307. If you called it today's work, part one, well, make sure you spell your folders exactly as you need to in the command prompt. Cordova, run, Android, space, dash, dash, device. If the device is set up. This will do a build behind the scenes, and then it will deploy, hopefully, the project onto your device. It'll still be the rather plain device ready, but if you try to rotate, it should lock it and into portrait and not rotate. We won't see that background color yet because we have no screens to jump through. And if there's any errors, we'll fix the errors. But let me pause right here because mine's going to take a moment. If you are trying to use your own device, um, remember last time we had to activate developer's mode. So on your device, you have to go to your settings, somewhere in your settings, and then you have to find your developer's screen to activate USB debugging. So I'm going to pause while mine works here. If anyone needs any help, call me over.
Really? Yeah, I think the one that we're going to I think China is
but did you make some of the changes that I was already making here? We will Saved on your flash drive. What I would do is, um, it's not even my flash drive. It's on your desktop. If you have a flash drive, I would save this work for the moment because what I'm saying, what I was about to say was perhaps restarting the computer. Oh, okay. Kind of wait to get up and then restart. When you start. Okay. Because your code seems right and it's getting a job in her with the Java version.
All right, so what's happening at this point is that hopefully then it, it runs on, on a device. And I helped a bunch of you, and, and uh, we saw that everyone had, everyone had slightly different uh, issues. And that's to be expected, but once we smooth those out, this should go a lot faster, of course. Make notes, of course. So what perhaps you needed to do was you needed to download your driver. Guess what? When you come back on Thursday and you're using your own device again, these computers forgot your driver. So if you installed your driver today, make sure you save your driver on your flash drive to reinstall it Thursday and the week after that and the week after that and the week after that. 
my tablets work fine because I installed the driver, I set it up, they all work fine. They should on these computers. Your own device needs to be activated into developer mode, and you most likely have to then get the driver. So that looks like we got it done for most people. If not, we'll, we'll check you in just a moment again. But the whole point of that was to run this to check the changes. And the only big change, like I said a while ago, was it's locked to portrait orientation. If I try to go landscape on this, it should not rotate landscape because we've got that attribute of orientation equals portrait. We've locked it to, to portrait. I want this app that we're going to work on to stay vertical. These other things about the Android version code, you, you don't really see them for the moment. This background color, we don't really see that either because we're not jumping from screen to screen. And the minimum SDK and target, those are all kind of internal as well. Those are the big ideas that I wanted to do for this template. We'll do one more thing on this template, then we'll take a break. What I want to do is, um, when we played with the camera plugin, we um, we added the um, we added one plugin to to that camera testing project. We added the camera plugin. What I want to do is activate all of the plugins so we have the ability to work with everything. Uh, the, the downside here is our app is going to get larger because we're going to have the ability to use the camera, the ability to use the phone book of the device, the ability to check orientation, other kind of orientation status and compass direction and all of this stuff. We're going to activate all of the plugins. I think it's like 19 plugins. Our app is going to get larger. Now I'm doing that so that then later on um, we'll talk about removing the plugin of those that we don't need. I don't know which plugins I need just yet. I do actually, but I'm keeping you in su suspense. So we're going to activate all of the plugins and then eventually we're going to remove the plugins we don't need because eventually when we've got our app done and someone is trying to download our app, why does this app need to access my phone dialer? Why does this app need to access my location? Well, we're going to activate all the permissions. We're going to activate all the features. And eventually, we're going to just whittle it down to the ones we do need. Probably when you download an app, do you notice that it says, this app would like to use your microphone. This app would like to use your camera. And we're going to activate all the permissions. And then eventually, we're going to deactivate the ones we don't need. It's actually very easy to activate them all. I've got one command for you to do to do them all in the network folder. Go back to the network folder. I just added a file there. If you scroll down to the network, copy the file called Cordova All Plugins. Copy that to your desktop. So I just added it. Everyone needs to copy it again. Once you copy that Cordova All Plugins inside of there, it's one command. And you know what? I forgot to change it here. So um, hold on. Don't copy it yet. This is for the old version. Okay, sorry, one little thing here. Go to the network folder and you want to copy the file called Cordova All the Plugins. Copy that to your desktop. And then when you get a copy of it, look inside of there and there's one long, long, long command that goes on and on and on. It says Cordova Plugin Add and then the battery status plugin, space the camera plugin, space the console, the contacts, all of the plugins, all of the permissions. The way this will work is you can do edit select all to copy the to select the whole line and edit copy. In the command prompt, make sure you're inside your template project. 
control V will not work, you have to right click and paste. And that's going to type for us Cordova plugin add battery and tr uh, file transfer and globalization and media capture, every plugin. Press enter and then take a break because this will take a moment.